Vertical Analysis of Financial Statements, a step-by-step -step introduction. Vertical analysis can be a great starting point to understand how a company is doing. And when you're lucky, like in the case of Meta Platform slash Facebook, the company you want to review has its financial statements available for download in an Excel file in the Investor Relations section of its website. We could go for the quarterly balance sheets and income statements right here, but in order to see the big picture, we are probably better off looking at the full year financial statements in the 10K annual report. Let's start with a vertical analysis of the income statement. In the table of contents of the Excel file, click income statement and you will be transported to that tab. A bit of formatting is needed. Let's delete rows one through nine and then delete row five. Let's narrow the column width and then underline and center the years. Now let's zoom in to 150% and we have a clean file to work with in our vertical analysis. The way the income statement numbers are presented here is with the oldest year on the right and the latest year on the left. Let's start our analysis of the income statement with the latest financial year, 2022. In a vertical analysis, you express each line item as a percentage of a base figure within the financial statement. In the case of the income statement, the base figure in the vertical analysis is revenue. Let's put the year 2022 in cell G5. The first Excel calculation that we insert in cell G6 is C6 divided by C$6. We want to express the outcome of that calculation as a percentage. I prefer to use a percentage with no decimals, or maybe maximum one decimal, to avoid being misleadingly precise. Then we put the formula used right next to this percentage using formula text. And then copy over the formula into rows 8 through 17. We have now expressed each line item in the income statement as a percentage of revenue, with a minimal amount of typing, as we have used C$6 as a reference to the revenue that we divide with. We are now looking at a common size income statement, which is an income statement where each line item is expressed as a percentage of the base figure of revenue. The first thing we learn in this vertical analysis of the income statement is that Meta Platforms had income from operations of 25% of revenue and net income of 20% of revenue. In terms of expenses, research and development is the single largest line item at 30% of revenue. $35 billion spent on R&D in cell C9 on a revenue of nearly $117 billion in cell C6. Let's insert the subtotal of gross profit right after cost of revenue. Gross profit dollars equals revenue minus cost of revenue. C6 minus C8, D6 minus D8, E6 minus E8. We can express gross profit as percentage of revenue as well, 78%. Let's format the gross profit row in bold, just like income from operations, to show it is a subtotal rather than an expense line. Now we have expressed the key income statement metrics as a percentage of revenue, gross profit, operating income, and net income. We can analyze these over time or use them to compare Meta Platform profitability to other tech companies. Down here, below provision for income taxes, we will also insert a line for effective tax rate, which equals C17 divided by C16. Provision for income taxes divided by the income before provision for income taxes. At 19%, the effective tax rate is very close to the US federal statutory income tax rate of 21%. We have found out a few important and interesting things about the profitability of meta platforms by performing a vertical analysis on the income statement of just one year. How about we expand the vertical analysis to the latest three years of income statement data? Copy the calculations from column G into column H and I and update the years in the header. That's all that's needed. Columns and row references update automatically. Once that is done, let the trend in the percentages sink in. What do we see here? The relative profitability, expressed as a percentage of revenue, seems to be fairly similar between 2020 and 2021. Income from operations as a percent of revenue was slightly up, while net income as a percent of revenue was slightly down. However, 2022 
is very different from 2021. To see how different, let's calculate the difference in percentage points between the two years in column K. We label this column V percentage points, 2022 versus 2021, and then simply calculate what's in column G minus what's in column H on a line-by-line -line basis. Where do we start to make sense of these numbers? On the income from operations line. This used to be 40% of revenue in 2021 and dropped by 15 percentage points to 25% of revenue in 2022. It's very clear where most of that difference comes from. Research and development expense went up by 9 percentage points from 21% of revenue to 30% of revenue. On top of that, cost of revenue went up by 2 percentage points from 19% of revenue to 22% of revenue. If we display the numbers with one decimal, we see that it's actually 9.4 percentage points and 2.4 percentage points. And general administrative expenses went up by 2 percentage points from 8% of revenue to 10% of revenue. All of these are worth investigating by reading the notes to the financial statements and the MDNA section of the annual report. How about a vertical analysis of the balance sheet as well? A bit of formatting and cleaning up before we get started. Deleting rows 1 through 9, deleting rows 35 through 39, narrowing the column width, underlining and centering the years, and zooming in to 140%. In a vertical analysis, you express each line item as a percentage of a base figure within the financial statement. In the case of the balance sheet, that base figure in the vertical analysis is either total assets or the sum of liabilities and equity, which is the same number as the balance sheet needs to balance. In column F, we start off the vertical analysis of the balance sheet with expressing each of the assets as a percentage of total assets. For the cash and cash equivalents line, F9 equals C9 divided by C$20. Let's format that as a percentage with no decimals. Let me show you the formula by using formula text and copy both of these cells down through row 20. Let's highlight current assets and total assets in bold. My first thought is that current assets at 32% of total assets is relatively low for a big tech company. But then again, $41 billion of cash, cash equivalents of marketable securities in absolute terms and 22% in relative terms is still a very large treasure chest. The next thing that jumps out is property and equipment at 43% of total assets, the single largest line item in the list. If you want to dive deeper into the financials of meta platforms, then this is certainly a category to investigate, given how big the impact is of depreciation of property and equipment on the income statement and of capital expenditures on the cash flow statement. If you take property and equipment plus operating lease assets, you even get to 50% of total assets. Goodwill is something to be wary of on any balance sheet, as the risk of goodwill impairment is always lurking in the shadows. It's important to know what the goodwill on the balance sheet relates to. In the case of meta platforms, you will have to go all the way back to the 2014 annual report to find out that the majority of that goodwill relates to the WhatsApp acquisition. Now that we have identified the top three categories in assets through our vertical analysis, let's do the same for liabilities and equity. Cell F24 equals C24 divided by C$39. Express this as a percentage with no decimals. And then copy that formula down the column. Let's highlight current liabilities, total liabilities, total equity, and the sum of liabilities and equity in bold. The first thing I would look at is the current ratio, a metric that looks at liquidity, current assets divided by current liabilities. With current assets of nearly $60 billion, 32% of total, versus current liabilities of $27 billion, 15% of total, the current ratio is well over 2, which is on the safe slash conservative side. Also, equity is 68% of the total balance sheet. 
This is an indicator of solvency. And 68% is on the high end of what I have seen on balance sheets of other large companies. Not much more to say about liabilities and equity for year-end 2022. Let's put the percentages for the 2021 vertical analysis of the balance sheet next to them to see if we can detect any trends. Getting the percentages in place for 2021 is simply a matter of copying what is in column F, pasting it in column G, and updating the year in cell G6. With formulas trace precedence, we can show that the formulas reference the correct cells. In column I, we will now add the variance in percentage points, just like we did in the vertical analysis of the income statement. I9 equals F9 minus G9. Let's copy that formula down all the way for assets, liabilities, as well as equity. What do we see now? On the asset side, cash, cash equivalents, and marketable securities, which are decreasing, getting converted into property and equipment, which is increasing, or the balance sheet that is growing in size. A big shift in the footprint of what the company has invested in. On the liabilities and equity side, the introduction of long-term debt from zero to 5% of total, and to a lesser extent, the increase in accrued expenses and other current liabilities to offset equity that is shrinking as a percentage of total liabilities and equity. A big shift in how the company is financed. That's how vertical analysis provides you excellent starting points to dive deeper into the company's income statement and balance sheet.